please support this channel by clicking on the links below. Golden Age of the Moor, edited by Ivan Van Sertima. The African Heritage and Ethno History of the Moors. Background to the emergence of early Berber and Arab peoples from prehistory to the Islamic dynasties. By Dana Reynolds. Part 3. The Ancient Vazanis as a Nilo-Saharan people. The Romans, speaking of one of their slaves who happened to be a Garamantian, described him as black as pitch. The Garamantes had a tribe called the Tedamansi, who lived south of the Syrtis. Seth Bernadette also gives Gamphasantes as an alternative name for Garamantes. They claim to be descendants of the earth-born Garama. The Tedamensi, Gamphamansites, and Nasimones, all of Libya and Fezzan, were considered a related people. The Garamantes, who were named after their capital, were spread to Lake Nuba. One of the Ptolemies also described the Garamantes as somewhat black and more likely Ethiopians rather than of Libyan origin. Such descriptions correlate well with the skeletal remains of the Garamantian area. They had been called by Tacitus invincible. They were involved in the trade in salt and gold across the Sahara and their trading extended far to the east in Nubia and to the Carthaginian area and far to the north in Tunisia. According to Robert Graves, the Garamantes were established in the Jado Oasis in Niger from an early period as well. Trans-Saharan trading contacts of the Carthaginians were carried on through the Garamantes who occupied Oasis connecting the most direct route between their brethren, the Nasimones, to the north and central Africa. The Nasimones and Garamantes were both said to be descendants of the same epinomic ancestor, Garamis. The names of the sub-tribes of the Libyans called Garamantes, who occupied the kingdom of Germa and whom Ptolemy II suspected to be Ethiopians, recalls the names of the modern Zagago peoples called Teta and Garawan or Goran. The Nilo-Saharan speakers called Teta, Garawan or Zaghawa called Ahel Gara by the Tuareg are found in desolate corners of the Sahara. They have a homogeneous, unique physical shape, similar manners and customs, social attitudes and gestures. They inhabit many of the oases in the southern Sahara including Uwinat, Kufra, the Kawar and Tibetzi the northern parts of Chad and Sudan, and are accustomed to raiding and trading over great distances. They seem to be the remnant of the ancient Ethiopian peoples extending between Fezzan and the Nubian kingdoms, who in the desert were called Trogodites, and who as town dwellers founded the town of Jerma or Garama, which in the Tedi Kanuri dialects means place of the Gara. It is plausible that the name of the town and kingdom of Kerma was an earlier form of the word. The Zaghagwa or Teta dialects are closely related to that of the modern day Konori, who are partially Teta in origin. Recently, J. Sharaman has pointed to some interesting correspondences between ancient Marotic and Konori languages. These people, after the destruction of the kingdom of the Garamantes, had founded the kingdom of the Zaghagwa next to the Nobotan kingdom of Nubia. It is known that the ancient Noba, or Nobote, who are probably ancestral to modern Nilo-Saharan speakers, still called Noba, living in southern Egypt and northern Sudan, not to be confused with the Nuba of the Cordofan Hills, were descendants of ancient people of the Karga Oasis in modern-day Egypt. The Ananubides, or Noba, were imported into Ethiopia or Nubia from the Karga Oasis to check the movements of the nomads called Blemis in the time of the Byzantine control of Nubia. According to Silius Italicus, they were a race blackened by the sun. As mentioned by Robert Graves, the Garamantes were considered to be a Kushite Berber people. We know the Garamantes traded in precious stones or carbuncles with the peoples of ancient Ethiopia. 
the type of cyst burial found in ancient Garamantian towns of the Fezzan, which are the most ancient current type found and spread throughout the northern Sahara, are associated with roughly hollowed stone bowls reminiscent of those of the southeastern Sahara. Hundreds of Fogaras have been found in the area of Wadi El Ajial, testifying to their skill in hydraulics. Pyramids that are typical of the Merotic tumuli also were built. The Roman general Balbus in 19 BC conquered the tribe. In the 2nd century AD, a group among the Levathes, which had been a perpetual menace to the Roman Empire in Africa, invaded the Garamantian territory and subdued the indigenes of Germa, forming a confederation called Zenata. Zenata included the Garawa or Megharawa, the Luata called Ephorases, and Mekenes. By the 1600s AD, the populations from Germa, the Megharawa or Jirara in Arab histories were scattered in post from Libya to Algeria, including the Garian, the Wargla Oasis, and the foot of the Auris. In the 7th century AD, the Arabs came into contact with the Gerara in the region of the Auris Mountains in northern Algeria, who were a subject tribe of the Levathes. According to one writer, in the Berber world there were several famous examples of supreme authority being attributed to a holy woman. One of the most famous stories is that of a queen of the Meghoara named Dia or Daya Kahina, who organized her people to stop the penetration of the Saracen Arabs. She was said to be the mother or a close relative of a general Kaecilia of the Luata in Mauritania. He was able to drive the Mohammedan Arabs north into Tripolitania. Later the Saracens succeeded in converting some of the Moors to the laws of Muhammad. The relative of the Daya Kahina was one of the converted and he participated in the conquest of Spain in the year 711 AD with his people. This was after the Dia had been killed in battle with the Arabs. These peoples, therefore, were the first of the Moors to enter Europe and were peoples closely related to the Garamantes and Levantes or Mori, the Nilo-Saharans and the Tuareg. They ruled as far as the Pyrenees and parts of southern France, about seven years after the capture of Gibraltar, or Gebel el Tariq, they invaded France, taking Marseille and Arlay in the 800s, and capturing Sicily in 837, and seizing Rome in 846. They dominated parts of southern Italy for years. A famous semi-historical French epic written in 1100s, The Song of Roland, describing this invasion, calls them a people blacker than ink. They remained in France on the western Riviera in the town of Camarac, still known as La Petite Afrique, or Little Africa. Early King Arthur stories also describe the Moors as black as burnt brands. Sir Morian, the Moorish knight, is described as blacker than any son of man a Christian had ever beheld. The Africans were joined also by some of the Umayyad Arabs in North Africa and were overtaken only in the 11th century by another Moorish dynasty of Tuareg origin called al Murabatin or al Moravids. Remainders of these Zenata, north of the Sahara, still live in Algeria. They are described by one author as a people as black as Negroes. They also dwell in the Garian part of Libya while other Kel Furawan or Ephoras Toreg live in Algeria and Niger. The peoples of Germa or Garama, known as the Jawawa in Arab records of the 6th century, had also been migrating after the invasions of the Vandals and Levathes in Fazan into the Sahel and Sudan areas where they later were known as the Ahel Gara, Wan Garawa, and Garawan, and even to this day as the Teda are called Gora An. The names of the indigenous Nilo Saharan peoples of the areas directly south of Fazan today correspond to the names of the ancient tribes of the Fazan called Tadamansi, Ganfasantes, and Garawa. We find tribes in the area of the ancient Zaghawa lands of Bornu and Kanem by the name of Gam of the Kunuri, 
Gara, and Teta. Some of the Zaghawa are called Anu Saman by the Torarek, which Richmond Palmer connects with the name of the Nasimonis. The jet black Zaghawa are still known for their incessant raiding, which was a marked trait of the ancient Libyan culture, including that of the Ethiopian Garamantes. Garamantians grazed their oxen backwards and also rolled their oxen just as modern Teta and Kanori and Nilotes further to the east. The Nilo-Saharan peoples who established the kingdom of Zagagala called their kings Kara or Karkar before the Tuareg presence, as was the custom in Nubia. Gora An Teta occupied the Bayuda Desert not far from Moro as well as the Tibesti area of Chad during the time of Leo Africanus of the 14th century. The desert north of Khartoum was called the Desert of Goran in his time. The Zaghawa or Teta peoples have had a strong ethic and commercial connection with Nubia for thousands of years. Arab writers attribute the founding dynasties of the earliest known kingdoms of the Sahel and Sudan to Zaghawa. The Tuareg word for Zaghawa is Igzan and their language is Tazgait. The kingdom of the Zaghawa still existed and lay next to that of the Nubata or Nubians in Ya'akubi's day, 9th century. Another dynasty called Zagawe ruled in Abyssinia near the same epoch. According to the Arab geographer Yakut al Mahalbi, who lived in the 900s, said that Zaghawa were responsible for Kaukau's existence as a political unit. The Zaghawa of the Sudan mounted horses bareback and their chief wealth was in salt. Yaku Ubi said that the ruling dynasties of Kao Kao were the same as that of Jene. Jene and Kukia, which were ruled by Zaghawa in the time of the Arab writers, were said to have existed in the times of the pharaohs. Kukia was an early terminus of the desert trade and was the ancient home of the Zaghawa called Sunghe. Zaghawa were the first rulers of Kanem and Bornu and the Gobirawa of the Hausa kingdoms before the coming of the Tuareg Berber and Arab peoples. The dialect of the Teta and Kanori people are connected to that of the Zaghawa of Asbin and the Sunghe groups. Sunghe founded the Gao and Sunghe states some Songhe regions still preserve the people and place name of the ancient Jerma or Dejerma in the names Dejerma, Zarma, and Koroma. Many tribal habitats or place names in the Lake Facubine area are variants of the name. Some of these Zakawa in West Africa called Wangarawa, Wakor or Wakore by Arab writers adopted the dialects of the indigenous peoples of Malai called Mandi. These Wangara came to be called the Sonike or Saracole and include today Jula and Delonke and other peoples now speaking dialects called Mande. Sonike and Saracole people still consider themselves relatives of the Zarma Sanghe. Later on, other Wangara or Wakar merchants related to the Sanghe developed the Ghana Kingdom, in which is now Mali, and Burkina Faso, formerly Upper Volta. They were the early founders of Ghana Empire, which was called Wakor or Wagadu. In modern times, we find certain Mande speaking tribes under the name Koromanse on the Upper Niger and the names Garuma Rarus in Niger and Fada and Gorma in Burkina Faso, ancient Ouagadougou, in the area between Debo and Fakwabin Lakes in Mali, were found many diverse names of places more or less approximating the name Dejerma, such names as Diaram, Dermala, Tanderma, in this area of the ancient Zarma Sanghe. The Nubian affiliation of the ancient Nilo-Saharan people explains the adeptness in metallurgy, masonry, and sorcery of so many Nilo-Saharan and other African groups. 
From them no doubt were derived many of the legends, myths, and cosmology reminiscent of the ancient Egypto-Nubian kingdoms and the traditions of the ruling clans being from the north and northeast. The metallurgy and Masonic skills which led to the pyramids and tumuli in conical and pyramidal shapes spread across the Sudan were no doubt to the early presence of Zaghawa. Gao was by tradition the home of sorcerers used by the pharaohs. To them were due some of the burial customs that once resembled those of ancient Nubia and Egypt and perhaps the megalithic stone circles found in Senegal, Guinea and elsewhere in the Sudan. The spread of this fundamentally Nubian group may have led to the towns named Kerma, Garamas, Jerma, Dejermas found across the Sudan. They would also have brought their astronomical knowledge and highly developed skills in masonry, mathematics and hydraulics into medieval North Africa and Spain. The Luata as Tuareg Tuareg are the direct descendants of the peoples called Mores or Levathes, Mazix and Farusai. Their clan names recall all those of the Luata of the Byzantine period through the time of Arab historians. The names of the Lagwathes or Levathes, known as Mores, like those of the Ifarases or Farusai and Mazikes, became prominent in literature especially after the Roman colonization in North Africa. According to D.J. Mattingly, the Luata seemed to have been in the process of migrating westward from the area of Egypt in the time of the early Romans. The Lavathes or Lagwatine are mentioned in the neighborhood of Leptis in Justinian's time, 4th century AD. In Leo Africanus Book 6 of the 15th century, the Luata are mentioned as a people stretching from Aigila to east of the Nile. Perhaps they are responsible for the present day Lahawi or Lahawin east of the Nile. They are the Ilium of Chad epics who by the end of the 12th century had fought the Arab Beni Hilal and lost. After that time the inhabitants of Tripoli, Tunis and Adulia were mostly Arab. By 1269 the Luata had completely abandoned the Barca in Libya area. In the Infact al-Masori Sultan Muhammad Bello wrote of the Bornu and Aspen Tuareg tribes called Kilowai, who came from the region of Algila in Barca, present-day Libya. The chief division of the Kilowai is still called Emeslaga, corresponding to Ilagua or the Laguatan of the Romans who were the Luata of the Arab writers. The Amicatan, Katama, and Igdalan tribes it is said took Ahir from the Sudanese. Kiloai belonged to the Oregon branch of the Tuareg. The Kiloai dialect is still called Arugugage, the Oregon of southern Libya and Algeria between Gahat and Murzuk in Fazan are known as Hawara and Ihagaran. According to Ya Akubi, a 9th century Arab historian, the Hawara abode was in his day from the boundary of the district of Sort to the Tarabolis, Tripoli, and Leptis Magna. Among the stocks related to them or claiming kinship with them were Luata. They were a very commercial peoples. Another tribe of the Luata that came into the Hogar land in Algeria, he says, were called Lamta. The Lamta, according to Ya Akubi of the 9th century, were on north of the road which ran between Kawar in Niger and Ujila in Libya. According to Ya Akubi, they were famous for their shields made from oryx skin called Lamt. The Tuareg still used these shields. Kushite Affiliation of the Tuareg A.D. Makrisi, a 9th century Arab writer, calls the animal from which the Beja shields were made, Orek. Many of the Beja customs of today are in fact the same as the Toreg. 
the Touareg and Beja both have a custom of presenting themselves to a chief and saluting him by putting his hand on the chief's shoulder and doing so several times to show great respect. The Oryx was apparently one of the totemic animals of ancient Nubia. It is seen eating from a table set on an altar, perhaps representing the table of the sun, on Nubian pottery from Karanag. The Oryx bears the totemic designation El Amt, which is similar to the name of the female camel the other totemic ancestress of the Kushites, Talmit, in Tamashek. Silko, king of the Nobate and the Blemye, a few centuries after Christ, stated, I am a lion in south country and an oryx in the north. The root here, amd or mad, is connected with the Tamashek word mad or med, which signifies female and earth. The word for the female lineage or connection is Tamar Derechi. At least two ancient kings of Aksum were called El Amd or Ella Amida. The Blemis, Beja, lived on both sides of the Nile in ancient times. They were first known as Maje or Medid and dwelt in the eastern desert, but later on, Diodorus calls them a Libyan people. Pomponius Mela also said they were a people who dwelt west of the Nile. They are described as black and woolly haired peoples by Nanus in his Dynsica. The Blemis of Mero were numerous in the Thebaid, 276-282 AD, operating as far north and east as the Gulf of Aqaba in southern Palestine. Their nobles or leaders, who were the Elam Meshi, Megabari, or Mazikes, were considered to have some common connection with the rulers of Mauritania, Morocco, and Algeria. Certain raiders of the eastern desert were in fact called Maza to a very late period. In 380 to 400, Mazikes ravaged the oasis west of Egypt. They also dwelt in Tripolitania. By 545 AD, the Blemis were a considerable power in the deserts of both Upper and Lower Egypt. Heliodorus said that the Blemis anciently had close relations with the Persians during the time of their conquering and invasion of Egypt and Nubia several centuries BC, and they followed their method of fighting by shooting arrows from the kneeling position as did the Luata Mores or Meziques in Procopius' time. The Blemis were in alliance with the Trogodite peoples called Megabari, who may have been the same as the Meziques mentioned by Evagrius in contact with the Blemis. The key to the Tureg Blemi connection and the answer to why the Blemis are called a Libyan people and the Meziques called Ethiopians may lie in the Beja connection and that of the Nubian kingdom of the Blemis called Macoria to the Meziques. The Blemis were a people in contact with Aksum the capital of Abyssinia. The shields of the Beja were also called the Bucklers of Aksum. During the period approximately the 3rd to the 4th centuries AD, the Aksumite Empire is described in certain documents as the 3rd and 4th world power in one document. Aksumite Christians are mentioned as having a victory against Berber indigenes in the Fezzan area of Libya. The Blemis themselves were said to be a people who had been Jacobite Christians since the time the Copts brought Christianity to Nubia. The early Macorite or Makora of the kingdom of Makoria were spread to Algeria, known as Macorines around this time. They were converted to Christianity sometime around the 6th century AD. Today, some Tuareg are called Imaguran and the Hogar Tuareg were traditionally once a Christian people. Peoples named Majibara occupy an area named Argila, where the Iliam or Luata once roamed and which is one of the places the fierce Mazikes were known to have ravaged. Late texts speak of people called Mahovera in Nubia. The name of the Mishi-like modern Emoshag or Mashek of the Tuareg means nobles, 
and is probably related to the name of Mesh or Mash, an ancient sun god in Nubia, usually connected in inscriptions with a god called Med or Mad, who was probably the Madir of Abyssinia. Mad is called in an ancient Nubian inscription, he that is great among deserts come from Pu'ani. He was chief god at Talmus in Nubia during the Nobatean and Blemi period a few centuries after Christ. Mit and Mash are often mentioned as deities in ancient Karanog inscriptions. Med and Mash seem to have been deities associated with fire altars or the hearth as well as the sun. These deities were derived from the pantheon of the 25th dynasty Libyans, according to one scholar. Fire worship is an ancient Beja and Tuareg custom. The Tuareg still wear the veil that was once used to keep them from breathing on the sacred fire. The Titans, or Libyan god ancestors, were fire worshippers as Ad of the Quran and Arabic tradition was a son of the fire mist. Atlas who was Darius or Idris of the Arabs, symbolized in Greek myth by a man holding the four corners of the universe in his hand, was metaphoric of the god called Midalai or Amantar by the Tuareg and Teda, who was lord of the hearth, composed of pillars capped by a rectangular stone, which was in some way also representative of the table of the sun. In the writings of Ibn Khaldun, the veiled Lumtana Berbers, who were and are Tuareg, are called Magians, worshipping fire. There was a saying among the Tuareg until recently that fire is an attribute of a lord or a noble, which is Mash. The word for fire, Temsi, means belonging to Mash. A chiefdom in Bornu was called in the fire of, because of the Tuareg descended dynasty there. The manuscripts of that area speak of a sacred fire called Matabar. Traces of the Mariotic table of the sun and the fire cult which appears to have once extended past Abyssinia into southern Arabia, Persia and India are found among the peoples of ancient Bornu. In Kanem, in the Bornu Sudan, a chief used to be installed by lighting a sacred fire under a flat stone superimposed on three hearth stones invoking the god Midalai Amantar. Such ancient stone seats were known to have existed among the ancient Arabian Saracens as far north as Petra. The Beja were in the time of Makrisi still adoring the pure fire which the Arabs called Shaitan. Or Satan. Shaitan is Arab and related to the word Sati in Amharic Ethiopian and meaning fire. Ibn Salim al Aswani said that most of the people of Alwa in the kingdom of Makoria, the old center of Blemi power, sacrifice to the sun, moon, and stars and adore the fire and sun as gods. Every Beja clan from Alwa to the sea had its priest who pitches a tent made of feathers in the shape of a dome wherein he practices his adorations. Yaku Ubi states that the Beja area of Baglin was an area of many large towns, the inhabitants of which resemble Magians, believing in the dual principle of good and evil. In the 12th century, the Arab author Idrisi mentions the al Belium descendants of the Blemis as a people wandering in the country of the Beja and Abyssinians, nomads without settled abode like the Lam Tuna of the desert or the Maghrib el Akasa. They were composed of sister peoples called Belau and Hafero. In fact, the people named Afar who were considered Beja in the days of the Romans, still inhabit the countries of the Horn of Africa. Eritrea, Ethiopia, Djibouti, etc. appears to have some relationship to that of the ancient Ephorus, Afer, or Farusai of North Africa. The Ahir Tureg ancestress Besh, otherwise called Teziki the Lame, may be affiliated with the Cushitic Oromo or Gela goddess named Wesh, and the ancient Nilotic god Besh, who was also a lame god, 
and who also appears in very ancient rock engravings in Fazan. The Beli of Tad and Sudan or Belin of Ethiopia, Eritrea, were a people who were called the Bello of Adal, or Adulis in Abyssinian song. They are probably both Arab and Beja. The area between Adulis and Suwakin, called Kalau Belau, was also known as Matat. Today, the Beli, also known as Bidiyat, in the Anadi and Chad, famous for their breed of camels, are called Miti Miti by the Kanori, a name also reserved by them for Tuareg. This latter name probably has affiliation with the name for the early name Majayu or Matat for Beja and for the Blemis. Both the Bilai of Eniri or Anadai in Chad, originally from the Bediat and the Tuareg, have the short arm or wrist swords similar to the Beja and mentioned by Corippus as being peculiar to the Levathes or Laguatan, camelmen of North Africa. They call their language Baratuki. In Anadi, which is the ancient home of Zaghawa, are traces of mining and working of iron pottery of Nilotic origin. There is also evidence from rock paintings of warriors associated with the broad bladed lance first associated with horses, then later men with camels and pack saddles that enclosed their humps in the marotic manner. The Belin of Ethiopia have a tradition that they extend from the house of Tark or the pharaoh Taharke. The marks worn on this pharaoh's face in some of his sculptures are still worn by these Eritreans. Palmer related the name of the Tuareg or Targa to that of the name of the people in Mariotic inscriptions called Tarogu, but this was just a speculation. The latter is probably equivalent to one of the names for rulers or the king ancestor or divine ruler Kar, Ark, Ari, or Areg in the Hamitic and Afro-Semitic dialects. The Tuareg demigods are called Argulin which seemed to Palmer to account for the much recounted tradition of the Hercules who conquered Libya with the Moors and Afarik. The honorific title for Kanori, founders of the Tuareg ruling clan, called Maghumi, was Kurgulai. In the tradition of the people called Jukan, who traditionally come from northern Sudan and Nubia, Harkila was the king of Moro. Ancient Nubian kings were often named Archimon, or during the Byzantine epoch, Karkar. The Tuareg, Matat, or Majayu ancestors very probably introduced the veil and the fire worship or Magianism that seems to have been prevalent in the Maghreb until late times into the early Sahara through their contacts with Nubia and or perhaps during the Byzantine period. The Luata, who were the Ilam of the time of the Beni Hilal invasion, were said to have worn the veil. An early historical statement that the Blemyes had no mouths is perhaps explained by the fact that they wore veils. All of this may point to a connection between the peoples called Ilyam or Maza Mazikes, in the Libyan oasis and the Beja called Megabari and Ilyam Meshi of the Blemyes. These peoples were spread to the Red Sea coast in the east and to Algeria in the west. The origins of the Fatimid, Almoravid, and Almohad dynasties. The Berbers by tradition are normally divided into two semi-mythical historical lineages, one called Zenata and the other Senhaja. The Zenata ancestor Magdis el Batur was identified by Palmer with the names of the areas known as Maris and Pathos which signified the Nubian area south of Egypt in ancient times. According to Ibn Khaldun, the Sanhaja of the Maghreb, to whom belonged the veiled Tuareg, Lamta, Lamtuna, Kunta, Gomara, and Masmuda of the medieval period, lived in remote times in the country near the Rif of Abyssinia and veiled themselves with the Lithum, a garb which distinguishes them from other peoples. Having multiplied, they formed several tribes, such as the Godala, the Lamtuna, the Masufa, 
the Uzla, Targa, Jaghawa, and Lamta. According to Khaldun, they lived on the flesh and milk of their camels and never bowed to a foreign yoke. Eastern branches of the Tuareg fall under the name Emaketen, who were called by the Arabs Kitama or Kutama. In the early 10th century, Kitama Berbers, a people of Sanhaja stock who had occupied the little Kabili mountains of eastern Algeria, perhaps since the times of the Romans, founded the Fatimid Sultanate, centered in Egypt under a Shiite leader. They seized Kairouan in Ifraqa, which is the old name of Tunisia, in 909 AD, and established their capital at Cairo in the 970s, dissolving the earlier Saracen Abbasid dynasty. The Fatimids are recognized for having reoriented the trade of the Mediterranean. Goods as far away as Southeast Asia were shipped to the Egyptian region and passed on to Europe. It is one of their caliphs that let loose the Beni Hilal Saracens on the Iliam Toreg, who were the Lawata enemies of a then Arabized Egypt. The name Ilyam, according to Palmer, is the plural of El or Al, which in the Afro-Asiatic dialects signifies the father or progenitor or god, cognate to Imhan or Emili, Tuareg words for nobles. These camel warriors who figure on the pages of Procopius and Corybius, as has been said, were described as men black in color who carried a long sword with a short sword attached to the arm like the modern Tuareg in particular. The Zenata were, according to one specialist, a Luwata people. The Fatimid dynasty, however, fell in the 1170s. Control over Egypt passed to slave soldiers of the Fatimids, mainly men from Turkey and the Sudan, who were actually professional soldiers recruited and trained from childhood. This dynasty, called Mamluk, ruled Egypt until the era of the rise of the Ottoman Turkish Empire. In 711, a Berber army led by Tariq put an end to the Visigoth or Germanic Empire in one battle. In the 8th century, the site of the town of Tahart in Algeria, which traded with the Songhay state of Gael in the same area, belonged to the Lamea and Matmata Tuareg. A few centuries earlier in the 4th century, these predatory Mores under the name of Mori Gensi or Kinke Gentiani and Asteriques were nomadicized in the northern part of Algeria extending to Barca in Libya. Other Luata were apparently still present in northern Libya. The later Moorish dynasties in Spain and North Africa are known to have been founded by the descendants of the Luata generally called Sanajira or Sanhaja by Arab historians. Many of the famous trading centers and cities of North Africa were founded by them. In the 9th century, Ya Akubi says that the Sanajira, a people living near Kerouan in Tunis were called so because their ancestor had been a native of Singar, an area on the Blue Nile. Palmer felt that this was a variant of the name for the Maghreb Berbers called Sanhaja or Zenaga. The Kitama themselves were Sanhaja and according to Ibn Khaldun, their brethren were Masmuda and Gomara. Sanhaja, who made up one-third of the Berbers, after the 10th century occupied mainly the Maghreb el Akasa region, extending from Morocco and Algeria, and Ifrikaya to Nice to Niger, Malai and Senegal in the south. Peoples occupying oasis in northern Libya still speak Sanhajan dialects. These names, however, reflect the composite nature of the Tuareg Confederation of the Middle Ages since the Godala or Gatuli, Afar or Ephorus who comprised the Zenata, Zaghawa or Teda were all the names of distinct and separate tribes inhabiting North Africa and the Sahara since the Roman era and perhaps before. By the time of Ibn Khaldun, other Sanhaja called Lamta lived in the Sahara and in the Sus al Akasa. The Zaghawa were actually the servile tribes of the Tuareg in charge of caring for the herds or having other agricultural tasks. 
The Nilo-Saharan caste are known in various regions as Haratin or Ikaradan, Emredan, Enadan or Anbat. They were usually the smith or metal workers who make the knives, swords, and jewelry for the noble Toreg or Emoshag, and are at times much feared for their sorcery. The area of which the veil was worn in the 12th century included places as far east as the Red Sea coast. It was worn by the Nubians and by Abyssinian merchants who congregated at Felia. Today, some of the men from the region of Zelia in Somalia still veil their faces. From the area between Tunisia and the kingdom of Tahart, the Berbers generally known as Sanhaja or Zenaga, radiated over the western Sahara and Maghreb. Certain Fobi clans are also called Sandriwawa or Shanakora in Hausa. The majority of the modern-day peoples of the Sanhaja to which belong the Berbers, those of the Sus, the Masmuda, the Masufa, and the Zanaga of Morocco, Lamtuna, Kunta, Nafusawa are dark to very dark. The Gomara, Kablez, and some of the other Berbers in Morocco are now much fairer, or of mixed ancestry, especially those in the Rif area. However, Gomara and some of these other Berbers still claim to have come from the south. By the 900s in the north, the Islamicized Zenata dynasties of Maghraba and Beni Ifurin and Meknasi ruled the North African cities of Sale, Tadla, Fez, Siljmasa, founded by Meknasi Zenata in 757 AD, and Agmat. In the area of the southern Sahara, they had a bustling commercial center called Autogast or Arderis, a major town of ancient Ghana, which they shared with the Moorish Arabs. They also ruled Tadmaka, a meeting point of caravans en route to Gao from Tripoli in Libya and Tuat. The Zanata were Ebedite traders and were directly involved in commercial transactions while Sanhaja actually held control of the trade by levying taxes and played the role of caravan guides. The Zanata were said to have become corrupt and parasitical and a new dawn was on the horizon by the end of the 11th century. During the same century, Berber and Moorish kingdoms existed in the Iberian Peninsula. Although at Seville, there were Syrians calling themselves Abadids. The Aftasids were Berbers. At Malaga were the Hamdids. At Granada, the Zirids. And at Saragossa were Moorish Arabs. The Sanhaja also included the men called Lamta, Lamtuna, and Masufa. The Lamtuna today, called Alumaidin, or the Sanhaja generally recognized by scholars on North Africa to have composed the original al Moravid or el Morabatin Moorish peoples and dynasty. By 1068, the Lamtuna lived to the south of present-day Rio de Oro in the country now called Spanish Sahara. According to Ibn Khaldun of the 14th century, the Lamtuna lived in the desert north and northeast of Timbuktu and were brothers of the Sanhaja. In the preceding century, the Sanhaja called Masufa lived in the desert between Aragast and Siljumasa. They controlled the trade routes running through that area. They developed the salt mine of Taghaza. The Sanhaja ruled Autogast as well which was mostly populated by Zanata and some Arabs. According to Ibn Battuta, the Masufa tribe were the inhabitants of Timbukt or Timbuktu and Walata as well. He remarked on what he thought was the great liberty and position accorded women and the custom of descent through women, which is typical of Tuareg clans. He also spoke of their surpassing beauty. Like other clans of the Sanhaja, the Tuareg, though Islamized, kept the traditional respect for women once customary to Ethiopian peoples in general, which struck the Romans and later Arabs as strange and wicked. There is mention of Moorish women doctors in early writings about the Moors in Spain. The Emoshag people don't eat totemic animals representing their female ancestors. 
Most of the Arabs that were Moorish and came to occupy Sahara, Libya, Fezzan were descended from the Banu Sulyam, the Hadhara or black kinsmen of the Beni Hilal. Both had moved from the central Arabian plateau into the eastern desert about 1050 AD. They went west in force, waging major battles with the Berbers and leading a major attack on Ifriqaya in Tunisia, ruled then by a Hamadi Sanhaja dynasty. One of the descendants of the famous tribe of the Quays Alan, who were ancestral to several of the later tribes who invaded African countries, was said to have said in the Hadhara of the Quays, is the surfeit of all my pride. Their descendants included tribes like Ulad Suleiman, Banu Makil, and Banu Hassan. According to the Egyptian writer Nawal Ed Zadwi, the prophet said, I am the son of the El Awatek Atika, daughter of Hilal, Atika, daughter of Mora, and Atika, daughter of El Alkas, from the tribe of Sulyam. Both Hilal and Sulyam, who came from the Central Arabian Plateau, considered themselves descendant of the Quays Alian referred to above. Note, there are black tribes among the Arabs, such as the Banu Salyam, Ibn Mansur, and those not of the Banu Sulyam who stay in Al-Hara. They, however, own slaves from among the Spanish who serve as guards and water carriers while their concubines come from Rome. Kitab Fakr al-Sudan Ala al-Bidan by al-Jaziz, 9th century. End of footnote. The descendants of Sulyam in South Egypt were and are known as Saides. Many others, like the Beni Makil, went westward to Mauritania and to Senegal, where they are called Charza. They subjugated and converted many of the Berbers, who became Islamic clerics. The latter, who became Arabized, are found throughout Saharan and Sahel areas and were called Zuwaya. Such tribes as the Morgarba, Chamba of Chad and Algeria, Kunta of Nigeria and Mauritania, and others played a major part in converting areas of the Sudan to Islam through proselytization, but the Zuwaya, especially the originally Libyan Morgarba of Sudan, also played a very large part in the slave trade. The Almoravid movement began among the nomadic Lamtuna Tuareg from the Adrar in Mauritania and later included the Godala, the Gaitulai. They controlled the caravan routes from southern Morocco to the western Sudan in the middle of the 11th century AD. They captured Ordoris or Autogast, the chief desert port of the Ghana Empire, then the town of Sujumasa in southern Morocco. One of their leaders, Yusuf, founded Marrakesh. By the end of the 11th century, they had captured all of Morocco and western Algeria and Muslim Spain. However, they failed in their attempts to gain hold over the nomadic Fulani and Takur, who were Godala. The Al Moravid Empire lasted only half a century until it was overtaken by other peoples also of Sanhaja stock, the Masmuda, who established the Almohadin or Almohad dynasty. The Almohads destroyed Siljumasa in the 1100s. At its height, they had the best fleet in the Western Mediterranean. This period also witnessed the finest of Muslim architecture in Spain and Morocco. Many of the arts and letters of polished upper-class life continued in local centers like Grenada long after the Moors lost control of the area. The Moors built in Grenada what is considered one of the greatest known works of architecture and art. The castle Alhambra, later a Christian artist painted the human figures that appear on the ceilings which the strict prohibitions of Islam and Arab tradition would not have permitted. Moors appear in depictions of this period as slender, black-bearded men. There are similar representations of Moors and white Portuguese in Japanese paintings dated from the time of the first Portuguese visits to the Orient. One famous painting shows bearded slender Moors at leisure, 
One is handling a harp. Others play chess, and they wear apparel typically worn by today's Fulani nomads and other southern Saharans. The Moorish civilization was of fundamental value in creating a rebirth of culture and arts in Europe and throughout the world. Many native dances and stringed instruments that are now European have their roots in the Moorish cultures of Spain and Portugal. To the smiths of the Moors, probably the vassal smith caste of the Tuareg and Arabs, were due the development of major Masonic orders in Western Europe. They brought with them metaphysical and esoteric traditions and Masonic-related sciences, like algebra, that were many thousands of years old. From the Moorish stock came many of the great early European philosophers and astronomers including Spinoza, Albu Masur, and Ibn Rushid. Moors were the greatest influence in the development of the chivalrous era and they introduced such things as were associated with knighthood, horse breeding, and war, including jousting, fencing, and the board games that developed into modern day chess and checkers. One can see in Bornu today men wearing light armor and jousting on horses covered in pauls reminiscent of those that the horses of European knights used to wear. The Tuareg tradition of according women great respect was influential in developing a kind of chivalrous attitude of European men toward women which became a virtual code of gentility among knights and the gentleborn. Many a family in southern Europe bears the name of the ancient Moorish tribes of North Africa. Such names as Ortega, Medina, Alvarez, Silva, and Sigani and especially names that start or end with Ez and S among Spanish descendants, and names like Mussolini, Caramante in Italy, are actually Berber and Arab namesakes. Conclusion The word Moor was used for people basically Berber in origin, but then came to include, during the Islamic period, the early Arabians. Both of these populations belong to a physical type or types of men commonly referred to by early scholars as Hamitic, Brown or Brown Mediterranean. Throughout the Middle Ages and previous to the Atlantic slave trade, other men of black or nearly black pigmentation, particularly Muslim, came to be commonly referred to as Moors. Although there had been an ancient influx of populations biologically affiliated with Europeans in the latitudes between 35 and 20 degrees in Africa and Arabia, the northern regions of these areas were still predominantly populated by groups genetically and ethnically affiliated with black Africans until the Middle Ages. The increase in migration through the slave trade as well as Turkish rule in the Arab world did much to modify the genetic composition of North Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. The Berber is not a homogenous type of man today physically or culturally. The word Berber is probably ultimately derived from an indigenous African word related to the word for water or water sources. This may account for why the term was used particularly for highly nomadic and pastoral peoples. The present day use of the term differs in that it is mainly employed for those who speak a Berber dialect. These dialects are connected to the Tamashek or Tuareg dialects which belong to the Erythrean or Afro-Asiatic group of languages. The ancient Berbers were ethnically related to pastoralists and nomads of Nubia and extending to the Red Sea. They were the first to be called Morisoi or Moors. The wandering Libyans of Herodotus and Greek legend and histories were direct ancestors of the Berbers spoken of by the Romans. They were traditionally believed to have colonized, prior to the Christian era, parts of the Iberian Peninsula and the Mediterranean as well as portions of Asia Minor and the Levant. These men were the first to be called Libau, Tamahu, and Tehenu and are portrayed in Egyptian iconography and literature. The connection between the Tamahu and the sea group population of ancient Nubia and Sudan is fairly well established by linguists and archaeologists. The Red Fulani of Niger or perhaps the best example of the ancient Libyan or Gaetulian as he looked to the Greek and of the Berber as he looked to the Roman. 
They preserve more than any other groups of the Sahara cultural features, customs, and physical traits described by the Greeks and portrayed in Saharan and ancient Egyptian rock art. These Fulani, to a large extent, also closely represent the sea group populations of the ancient Saharan and Nubian region, and the so-called Abyssinian or Hamitic type that spread into the Horn of Africa previous to 3000 BC. The Berbers of the chariots and camel periods seem to represent additional waves of people from the Nilotic area as indicated by rock drawings and pottery and tomb types of the Sahara, Hogar, Tassili and elsewhere, and Nubia. Beja or Kushites and other occupants of Nubia shared customs similar to ancient quote-unquote Libyans and were also called Berbers by the Romans until the end of the Byzantine period. The Nilo-Saharan speakers are a people who had migrated from Nubia after the end of the Kerma period. They may have emerged from the convergence of Cushitic and other African groups in the area. The Garamantes and related Fezanese Libyans possibly represent one of the ancient populations that were cultural heirs of Nubia and directly ancestral to modern Nilo-Saharans particularly Songhe and early Wangara populations. The Tuareg are descended from ancient inhabitants of modern-day Libya, Tunisia, and Algeria. They are called Ifuras or Afar and Mazikes or Iguatan Mores by the Byzantine writers. Modern Tuareg or Tamashek speakers share many customs in common with the Beja. Magism which marked both early Tuareg and Beja, is the original reason for male veil wearing, which was also once relatively widespread among the indigenes of northeast Africa. The Moorish dynasties of the Islamic period were comprised of the ancestors of modern Teda, Tuareg, and Fulani, as well as the early Arabians of the Hejaz region of Arabia, whose remnants still dwell north of Mecca and in the Yemen. The Bedouin Arabs of the northern and central Arabian deserts during the period of Roman colonization of the Levant and Arabia were considered by the Romans themselves to be descendants of men who lived in a remote period in the eastern desert of what is now called Sudan near the ancient Beja populations. The late Moorish dynasties were composed of the ancestors of the men called Tuareg or Sanhaja today as well as the Fulani. They, along with the Moorish Arabs, were the main controllers of the trade routes running between the Mediterranean and the Sudan during the Middle Ages of Europe as well as in ancient times. Moorish civilization was of fundamental value in creating a rebirth of culture in Europe and throughout the world. The ancestors of the Moors were the blacks that had played a part in the ancient civilizations of Arabia, Nubia, the Sahara, and the Horn of Africa. In those places, they had traded their wares, fought their battles, participated in desert skirmishes, and endured the intense heat, scorpions, snakes, and sandstorms of the desert. But like their more ancient kinsmen of the great and complex agriculturally based civilizations, they had also mastered skills in navigation, metallurgy, hydraulics, astronomy, and masonry, and developed their own particular philosophy of the natural world, which pervades our modern major Western religions. It is a heritage and an era in history that has been neglected for centuries and distorted into something which those who were there to witness it, the Greeks, the Romans, and others, would hardly recognize. Hopefully, as more objective research is done on the traditions and history of the Sahel and Saharan areas of North Africa in general, more illuminating evidence will emerge. End of The African Heritage and Ethno History of the Moors by Dana Reynolds. Please support this channel by clicking on the links below.